Hey everyone, I'm Balloon, and E3 2019 is coming up, and so is Mass Hysteria, since Netflix is going to be at E3, but not Sony. Anyway, before the world ends, let's talk about some predictions, wishes, and other stuff about E3 2019 before E3 2019 happens. <laughs> EA, everyone's favorite terrible video game company. We already know about the annual sports games coming out this year, and if they don't come out this year, then cows will start flying, but the big game they're showing off this year is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which I've discussed in a blue short. And to make the long story short for the short, it looks good, but EA always finds a way to screw the pooches over. Overall, I'm interested in what EA is going to do this year, but for the wrong reasons, as after the Anthem disaster, EA is one crunch time session away from killing its trust with gamers everywhere. <laughs> Square Enix, a company that I love and hate at the same time. You see, I wasn't sure what Square was going to show off since Kingdom Hearts 3 already came out, but during May, we got a re-announcement for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it's time for some changing opinions. I made a video in 2018 saying I went to buy the Final Fantasy VII Remake because of Square Enix making bad business decisions about the game, like firing CyberConnect 2 and deleting all their work, who developed the excellent Dot .hack games. But the footage shown at the state of play looks really fun, and that really hurts me to say, because all the behind the scenes have been a mess, but a fun game is a fun game. Okay Square, just give me Red 13 as a playable character and I'll buy the game. Other than that, Square looks to have a small but quality showing this E3. I mean, it has to be better than last year's conference where they showed stuff that was already shown at the Microsoft conference. Hope that doesn't happen again. Ubisoft isn't skipping E3, but they are skipping Assassin's Creed this year. Other than that, big hitters they've got coming up are Skull and Bones, a pirate game that's gotten delayed multiple times, which happens a lot in this industry. We do have the highly anticipated Beyond Good and Evil 2, which has me conflicted. On one hand, the aesthetics of the game look good, but on the other hand, they turned the single-player adventure of the original into another big open-world game, which Ubisoft and the gaming industry as a whole made into an oversaturated market. Open world games can be fun, but there's just too many. I would rather the game be a single player experience, but the game is already far down the production pipeline as an open world game, may as well just hope that's a good open world game than what we could have gotten. As for stuff I want Ubisoft to do this year for E3, I hope we get another Nintendo collaboration, like the Mario Plus Rabbits game or the Starlink and Star Fox crossover, but can we please get a new Rayman game, I don't care if it's 2D, 3D, just throw Rayman on something that isn't a re-release of Legends. We don't know what to fully expect from Ubisoft, but knowing them, they're probably gonna have some wacky dancing at the beginning to promote Just Dance. Which still comes out on Wii for some godforsaken reason. <laughs> Bethesda went from one of my favorite developers to a mediocre one in the span of a year, thanks to the whole Fallout 76 debacle and the bleh Elder Scrolls Blades, which were two big games they were pushing last year, so Bethesda needs a game to redeem itself with, and Doom Eternal might be that game, because Doom is tons of fun, and Eternal looks to be upping the ante to 11. Other than that, they really have nothing else signed up for this year outside of updates to existing games like Elder Scrolls Online, but I'm hoping for a Fallout 3 remaster, preferably coming to Switch, and something new that isn't as ambitious as Elder Scrolls 6 that would preferably launch next year. So, place your bets in the comments down below, will Bethesda redeem themselves, or will they join Ubisoft in being mediocre developers that produce the occasional gem? Find out in about a year! <laughs> Ah, Microsoft, they're better at making computers than games. With Crackdown 3 being horribly handled, both on the game and the release front, and nearly all of their games being on powerful Windows computers, the next Xbox console needs to prove itself with exclusives and good games, but we're still stuck with the Xbox One for a while. We don't know much about Halo Infinite, and Gears of War 5 just looks like more Gears of War, but maybe we'll see some new games from their recently acquired studios, like Ninja Theory and Undead Labs. Microsoft has been having good shows at E3, despite the lack of exclusives with them, but they're promising their biggest show yet. And now, with recent news that they're partnering with Sony... Well, this is gonna be an interesting E3 for Microsoft, to say the least. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! I love Nintendo, and their second half of 2019 looks amazing! Mario Maker 2, Marvel Alliance 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and that's just stuff we already know about. They usually reveal at least one big game at E3. Now since I love Nintendo so much, I'm gonna predict all the big announcements they're gonna make this E3, so let's go. We're gonna get the Challenger Pack 2 for Smash Ultimate, new Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer with a release date, a big third party title coming to the Switch, and a big holiday game announcement. But out of all my wishes that I want to come true, I really want to see what Retro Studios has been working on since 2014's Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Are they working on the infamous Star Fox Racing? 
I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. So those are my predictions, wishes, and all sorts of thoughts on E3 2019 before E3 2019 happens. Stay tuned for my coverages of the conferences themselves, now let's take a look back at an infamous E3 moment 